Hi, welcome to Australian Off-Road Campers. Congratulations on purchasing your new camper. I'd now like to show you the different features and as we go along you'll see why these campers truly are ahead of the rest. I'd now like to show you how to unhitch the camper, but first we need to get the body level. If you can, pick a level site to begin with and it's a good idea to use one of these, a spirit level, just to check. Now in this situation here, we need to chock this lower wheel. So use a piece of timber. Place it below the wheel there and drive backwards. Use the level again and check it. Now that your camper is level, you're ready to remove it from the vehicle. First of all, put the handbrake on, undo the jockey wheel, wind it up until the hitch floats in the housing. Taking this pressure off will make it easier to unhitch it. Now take the pin out, pull back the lever and push down and pull up. Push the camper to one side. the electrical and the chains and last of all replace the pin into the hitch. Opening these campers is really easy and it can be done by one person if necessary. First of all you need to lower the jockey wheel so it has a definite nose down attitude. About two inches is fine. Next you undo the rear spare, there's two latches there and push it right the way around the camper. Now these campers have an excellent body seal on them, keeps out the dust. And because of this seal, open the kitchen slightly just to let the air out. Now undo the four body latches on the camper. Now open the floor out. It's got gas struts on it which makes it a lot easier too. And you just need to put a bit of weight on this corner here while the other person adjusts the leg down there. Leave about a finger's width of gap between the ground and the leg and also this leg here. Keep holding weight on this section here. You want this canvas to be nice and taunt while the other person winds the jockey wheel. And what you're looking for is to get this floor nice and level and that the legs are on the ground as well. Make sure that you do up all the bungee cords around the camper. Pulling it out of the body as you go. And just take care with this little Velcro strip here. Another great feature of these campers is that you can leave the overnight awning attached to the main canvas. Now to set this overnight awning up you need these two poles. They're actually kept in the front of the body here. Now the long pole goes to the kitchen side of the body. Unroll the front awning here. Attach the eyelets onto the poles and as you do this just uh, twist the pole back round and then the wind can't blow the canvas off. The next step is to piece the two overnight awnings together. Now this has a velcro plus a zip system on it. 
put those together nice and neat and just smooth the Velcro over as you go. And at the end, just make sure the two eyelets meet up here because you're going to put a pole through that later. Now you need the three square poles which are kept in the pole carrier at the front there. The first one is this square stainless pole. That goes into the front of the body here. Attach the canvas and fully extend the pole. The next one is the pole with the U-hook on it, as you can see. That goes at the top of the camper up here and your other square pole with the pin in it. That actually goes into the body of the camper. Be careful not to damage the hole as you put it in there. Attach the canvas, put the pin in. Extend the top pole first. This will keep the roof nice and taut. And then the lower pole. Now if you are in windy conditions, you can put a nine foot spreader pole between the two square poles. And just tension it up. Now this overnight awning will withstand about 20 knots wind. Any greater wind, you will need to attach two ropes and pegs just to give it a bit more strength. Now the kitchen. The way Australian off-road campers have designed this kitchen really takes the stress out of cooking a hot meal. To open it, turn the handle to the right, slide the drawer out, It'll come to a first stop, lift it up about an inch and pull it over and you'll see that's locked into position now. If you go a bit further by accident, it'll come to a second stop. This is the safety stop, you need to go back to the first stop. So lift it up, push it back and come back to your first stop. Lift it up and it's now in position. Undo the bungee cord, slide the shelf forward until the two pins lock in. Now to do your shelf, you'll need the shelf bracket. Notice it's got a keyhole cut out here. That goes onto the body here. Once that's into position, you need your side shelf, undo the bungee cord and you'll notice here that there's a locating pin that needs to come in contact with the, the rail of the kitchen here to lock into position. Also your pantry here to open it, just push the two clips in got nice storage space in there. Here is your uh, power outlet for your 240 and the inlet there. Here's your voltmeter for your battery and also the socket for your fluoro light. And the main power switch is in here and also just up in here is the uh, switch for your LED light as well which is handy when you're cooking. Inside the storage compartment here you've got the hose for the gas. It's got a bayonet fitting on the end which just goes just behind here.